try to make education less boring. That's a, that is a, that's a hard task, man. Hi, I'm Amy Jo Kim, founder of the Game Thinking Academy. Meet Dylan Watkins, an entrepreneur who recently completed our certification program. During the program, Dylan created a Mastery Path Teardown of Adventure Academy, a popular kids' educational game. Watch this teardown and learn how Adventure Academy creates a compelling experience from discovery through mastery and where it falls short. So this is Adventure Academy, a Master Path Teardown. The subject customer is built with the perspective of the parent and the child. So we want to understand both users because really they advocated for both sides, a uh, safe environment for parents, a fun environment for kids. And so we really looked at two of those different user types. So discovery seemed to be primarily focused around parents. When I feel like my child needs to have fun with education online, I want to log them into a learning platform and let them learn so I can watch their interests grow and develop. Child story. When I want to learn and be social online, I want to go to an app I can learn with friends. And so I can level up my avatar and show off what I achieved. Now, this right here actually came from some inside information. Corey actually has kids in the same age range. So the vernacular, when you talked about leveling up the avatar, is something that you said that your child was really into, right, Corey? For sure, yeah. He was really into um, all the different the hats he could buy and the backpacks and everything. So. He was definitely motivated by gaining coins and XP so that he could, you know, buy more cool things for his avatar. So how is the Adventure Academy discovered? TV uh, spots, pre-roll ads and social media, cross platforms, the ABC mouse, web search ads, playground word of mouth, app stores. The value prop, if you look at these three quotes here, really say a lot with a little bit. An MMO for teachers and, and, and students uh, will love. Uh, a child safe, very fun, interactive. You'll learn a lot and all the school subjects are tackled. I, I love it. Gaming meets school and Adventure Academy. So these are very good value props inside of here. And you know, at the top of the thing is a new online learning platform for kids eight to 13. So it's very, very clear. There's online videos. They don't go into too much depth of how it's as positioned and communicated other than this is an online MMO, you know, learning education platform for parents, teachers, and kids. They get you in and they get you to put in your credit card. So that, that thing is free at first. And then they really want to get special offers for annual subscriptions more because they really want the kids to go in and spend more time in it, getting hooked and uh, get you in, hard to leave kind of thing. A lot of things are around what, when you when you go through the funnel and things that they ask you is like, what is your kid into? You know, and you can put in science or math or social studies, but it really starts to understand, you know, you know, where did you come from and what are your kids into? So they can start to kind of map out top of the funnel to like, you know, you know, adding value to the end of the funnel. A lot of these things when you're getting up and getting going into the process is ex exploration and expressiveness. You can you can play with friends, you can customize your outfits, you can customize your homes, you can go into the marketplaces. And there's some really neat features inside the marketplaces. Not only are you buying things, but as you go through and you earn points and awards, you can actually take the things that you've you've earned, like clothing items, and you can resell them back into the marketplace. So it kind of creates a circular growth kind of a effect. And so one of the first things, adventures you go on, you actually uh, can go get a shirt that you can support your school pride and come back to the principal. So it's an all online platform. It's it's really agnostic. On, and so, you know, it makes it real easy, whether it's a tablet, PC, phone, mobile, any of those things to really uh, get up and start playing with it. Onboarding. So parent story. When I want my child to start learning, I want to quickly go through the signing up page so that I can get my child onto the platform and start experiencing it. They want it quick and easy. The child, when I want to start playing online, I want to have a little parental help so I can begin to learn and socialize, build my own characters. Uh, Corey, do you want to mention anything from your perspective, being a parent and, and helping your kid with the whole Adventure Academy? Uh, what was really interesting was the avatar building stage is very simple and straightforward, which is great because I think, you know, my child wanted to go through and like kind of put on different shirts and put on different hats and put on and kind of just really personalize that whole experience so that his avatar online represented a bit of his personality and a little bit of what he wanted to be. So is aspirational at the same time as representational of, of, of him. And he didn't want me to help him much, but because he kind of knew how to do it already, but he did want to ask me, do, do you like this shirt? Do you like this hat? So. A lot of that was very interesting as a parent to watch him build and, and uh, personalize it himself. 
reminds me of you talking about them wanting to buy digital hats and digital shirts. And you're like, it's just a digital shirt. You don't need it. It's not a thing. I, I know, I know. <laughs> but that's, that's, part of the, that's part of personal expression. So the onboarding steps, like you said, is, you know, they, they get you the first month free, but you got to put in your credit card. And then they hit you with, well, we'll give you 12 months for $60. Or then another one right at that is, oh, 30 bucks for six months. And so they're just trying to get you to just overcommit to the thing, even though it's like free in. So it's just abrasive, but I'm sure effective. Um, we talked about that before earlier, you know, online survey completions of like, where are they coming from and what are they interested in? So if you put in math, science, any of these other things, you can really understand, you know, you know, what is your kid into? What do they watch? What do they do? How do they spend time? So when you're onboarding it, it's very straightforward. You hit the download button, it downloads to the device. It, it goes through the process, you set it up, you launch it. Once you launch it, you go in, you start to customize your avatar. I made a little bald headed child like myself run around the place for the avatar. We can pick the dates, the name of it. I believe that story is on the bottom there. Then you can pick things like the, what are the age ranges, the difficulty? So you can set it up for this because because we know that as children go, grow and progress, that the learning and the educations and, and what they need for between seven and eight and 10 and 12 are vastly different. And in terms of chatting, the way that they communicate online was really interesting. They had different ways to chat. You could either just do a direct chat or you could chat by just selecting the items. You can disable chat altogether. They got around that was just saying, hey, look, it's your choice. What do you want to do? When you start to learn how to navigate, there's a, a little mouse wheel that shows you to scroll this way and this way to look around, to pan the camera around. So it was a really neat tutorial process because all you see is the school in front of you. As you pan the camera to the right, all of a sudden, bam, this bot comes into view and you move on to the next leg. And I thought that was really well executed, that you don't see the second step of the tutorial until you complete the first step. And then after this, uh, uh, other things pop up like an owl and you scroll up and down to follow it. You make it really easy to see that all the non-player characters are in green while all the other players are blue, which made it um, easier to digest. Some of the key onboarding steps, the, the child gets introduced to the game mechanics, finding and completing the quest, earning XP and gold, leveling up in the inventory. Uh, a lot of these things happen every time the child levels up, as to be expected, just completing the first quest levels you up. And then, and then every time you level up, it's a sequence of unlockables that basically gates you into experiencing more and more of the Adventure Academy. So this is the headmaster. You go and complete the quest. And when you go and complete your quest, you come back and only to earn coins, you earn items, you can check your quest log for stuff, but really it's kind of like the gate. The more you do, the more you get unlocked, which gets expressed throughout the game. What was really nice about this onboarding process too, from a kid's standpoint, is that it walks you through literally every stage of the game mechanics within the first 10 minutes. So how to navigate around, how to level up, how to find quests, how to, you know, earn coins. It's just everything was really nicely put in that onboarding quest, essentially. And I, I think that that's some of those like gold standard things that going forward as we create games, we look at the same thing of like, how are things introduced? How are the mechanics introduced? Rewards added in and used. So I think that just the onboarding process was amazing. One of my first missions was to go and get some swag, go to the campus store, put on an item, come back and, and show it all off. It was really neat to see and it was, you can, it's nice because you have to go and walk to the place and go through the experience. So it definitely is a, a, feels like an MMO for sure. Yeah, and I noticed that so far, this is 100% engagement and learning how the game works and personalization and no education so far. Not yet. So you come back and there's completion screens for onboarding. The first quest to give my headmaster is both a quest and a kickoff on that first non-guided onboarding quest. So this is where the education starts to come in, where they go, oh, by the way, here's Ad Adventure Academy. You need to go to this kiosk down the hallway outside the library door, and you can look at the word portmantis. It's my favorite word, and go check that out. And so this is the first assignment. When you go to these learning kiosks outside of the library or the science place or any of these other places, you get this kind of, very typical learning system here where you can go through different activities, learning paths, you can do lessons, you can do activities, you can do subjects, you can do favorites. And all these are our videos or interactive videos or sometimes light games, which are more just interactive touchscreen videos um, where you go through and you learn about different things. And then this has got its own learning path, learning loops as you, as you go through and you complete and you get more coins and more XP every time you complete it. You can favor it, you can rate it, you can play it again. You can't speed through it. If you speed through it, it goes, no, not allowed. Must watch whole thing to get credit. And so you can sit through it. What was nice about 
finding quests in there is that you can either stumble upon quests or you can open up the menu and pick something that you like. There's two different ways of finding quests, which I think is, is great because you get that discovery for the kids or you get that focused learning if they want to specifically just go do the math quest or the you know the language quest or something. One thing they just they do very well is self-directed learning. Just by completing onboarding game um, primers and, and game loops, completing quests, earning XP, leveling up, purchasing items, daily logins, like everything you do, every interaction, every time you make some sort of progress, you get rewarded for it out the gate. And a lot of these things are XP, coins, items, unlockables, things like that. They give you a lot with a little. That is actually part of the onboarding process. When you level up and you complete that first level, you get essentially all of these new unlocks and XP and the simple backpack and stuff. And I think that's great because that really does prime the, the child to know that there's rewards after they level up. So it's like they want to look for those unlockables. They want to look at daily logins so that they can get more reward. They really have primed that, that child to continue to, to sort of go to new uh, lessons and go to new quests to get these new things. That's, that's great because that is the, the end of the loop, which will then start the next loop. You could feel like that pop of joy, especially with the way the thing lights up like this, and then comes all of the, uh, the waterfall rewards, which is really cool. For sure. Um, habit building. When I feel like my child is spending time on the platform, I want to check the progress to see them using data so I can feel that they're developing learning. So that's what I want to kind of a check in parents like to do. Child, I want to customize my character. I want to go do lessons and earn XP and gold um, so I can continue to earn and buy more accessories for my avatar. So with that right here, in terms of core activities, um, where things that we're talking about is you find and pick a lesson and you go through that thing. Then you, you earn XP and gold and things like that which then allows you to complete the quest, which allows you to earn XP and gold and level up, which then allows you to buy things and customize your avatar in the store. And this is a, a lot of the core activities, pretty much this over and over and over and over again. Everything else is just bells and whistles for this core loop. So as you get to like, say level five, you get daily challenges. If you, if you level up, you unlock different sections of the map. As you level up, it's not just the coins and the experience, but it's also the level that you're at that allows you to do things. Yes, there is a currency. Once you get to level 30, it's a different currency. It's like the honor points, um, but that comes much later on the, the mastery loop. The, the, the main one really is just the coins. Got it, coins and XP. You unlock like a marketplace that you can go into and then you can use all these points in this giant marketplace town square kind of thing. There's several different ways of progression is communicated. You have the progress bar here that you can kind of see where you're at and how you're doing. You get a lot of these kind of kudos, great job things going on every time you complete something. You Every time you do level ups, you get that. Lesson completions, you can see things in here in the progress. And then here's with the maps, as you can see, you know, this is like the school that you're at first. And then as you level up, you unlock say the marketplace or these other areas that you get into. And so you can walk from spot to spot or you can kind of warp and teleport there. A progress tracker. So this is the parent side tool so that they can take a look at it. They can see basic analytics of haven't like spent too much time in it to actually get kind of um, the re-engagement triggers. But it seems to be that push notifications and daily quests are the, are the things that are kind of the re-engagement stuff. Yeah, and that seems to be more standard on the mobile devices. The, the desktop has, I believe, a notification system as well because I did not play on the mobile device. I had to ask my son <laughs> and I had to do some research to see how they looped back in. But yes, that's that's one of the ways that they do it, mostly on mobile devices for push notifications. But yeah, because that's playing PC. So, I, okay, that makes more sense. Astri. So, parent story. When I see my child progression, I want to look at uh, everything they accomplish so I know that the real life results value of this cost of subscription. They want the, the child to learn and grow in development and that is really the value prop value exchange. Child story. When I get to the upper learning levels, I want to unlock exclusive adventures and accessories so that I can further learn and show off the hard work in my avatar. Dad, check out my cool shirt or um, you know, look how far I've gone, those types of things. What's available to expert enthusiasts? Uh, do they get special permissions, access, or powers? A player has mastered the platform when they've reached level 30 and have completed all the quests from Headmaster Howell. The, the player will receive an honor credits at level 30 and each level after. Honor credits can only be spent on items the Honor Society store. The Honor Society items are exclusively to those who have only reached level 30. 
Corey, you knew more about this than I do. Is there anything you want to expand on about this? Sure, yeah. And I, I obviously, I didn't reach level 30. Um, I did my research and kind of watched some videos and stuff. And really, it comes down to um, once they reach level 30, you know, they're part of the honor quests and they earn honor credits, which again can be used at the honor store. And those items are very exclusive and they indicate very quickly from playing the game that this this character is level 30. It's He's a high level or she's a high level. So definitely it's one of those things that, that I think is a thing that the kids who are playing will strive for because it's one of those exclusive items. It's, so it's kind of like extra flair, like, hey, I beat the game kind of thing, but it's not really beat the game. It's, it's more of a, I've achieved something pretty high. To the game's credit too, it's it's an amazing looking game as well. Um, it has a very, very cool aesthetic and you know it is fun to be into. What's available to expert enthusiasts, special permissions, access and powers, uh, progress tracking, parents can track their child's mastery path by seeing their levels and lessons completed. You can see what they you know what they've done, how often they've done it, things like that. What do they do well? <laughs> they have a, a huge gigantic libraries of lessons and quests. There is so much in there for kids to go and do and learn. Enticing rewards to level up and, and gain gold. There's all these other things that you can do in there, but then you know a lot of that comes to the learning, going through that learn grind. Good customization of avatars. It was it was pretty easy and frictionless to, to customize the avatars. Made a lot of sense. Simple, it's nice. Safety measures in place for chat. Yep, that was a, a really good way. They had a couple of different versions of chatting so you could kind of, kind of pick how much expression you want your child to have. Good die exchange for description costs. To have such a large, vast education platform for the value is actually a really good deal. Uh, tried and true game loops for repeating plays. It's well crafted uh, from the, the tutorials to the onboarding to the education to the, the, the progression systems. It's it's meant for repeat playing. It's a solid game for sure. And it's a solid educational game at that too, which is great. Yeah, which is a very difficult to do. Uh, what did they not do well? <laughs> I had to sort of nitpick on this too, because I, I really couldn't find much that was that was wrong with it, to be honest. The, the in-game strategy, you know, there's the honor points, but there's not a lot of like, not a lot of incentives for that. The controls, yeah, they were a little, they were took a little, little funky to just kind of get up and get going with. There was just a couple of like weird quirks that I, I noticed, so that's one of the reasons why that was in there. <laughs> Like I said, I was nitpicking. There were varying ranges of quality of lessons. They more went for the hometown buffet style education of pick anything you want. You can kind of tell that all of the, all of the uh, the lessons weren't done by the same people. So, but some of the uh, the lessons were really really good. The teardown has proven that there is much to learn from Adventure Academy and how clean and streamlined their onboarding process is. It's living proof that combining education with classic gamification loops and uh, consistent rewards will entice players for many, many hours. Five out of ten. Yeah, it's, it's almost perfect. Yeah. Does your kid like it? Yes, they do. They okay, they bounce that's between. That's the important part, right? Of course, they bounce between Adventure Academy, Roblox, Minecraft. It it's consistent across the board. They they have a good experience, and and I think. Adventure Academy ranks really high up there with, with what they love to do. And especially because it's learning too. So I'm, I'm definitely encouraging that. Want results like this for your project or your client's projects? Hop on over to gamethinking.io slash programs to learn how you can work with us. We can help you get to product market fit in record time and build products that keep your customers coming back again and again. The link is in the description.